So the first reason why I'm already getting into it, why God, like, why we should follow Him, is because, like, I was, I was, um, two weeks ago or maybe three, was on the Congresso Mulheres, Mulheres, o pastor o filho do pastor que não dele o filho. Roberta não, não lembro mais. Ele pregou, so he preached about why we shouldn't give up on God, but now I want to get into why we should follow Him because there's a difference, like. We should follow up his ways or we should not give up his and like I don't need God anymore. But I'm gonna get into why like that the next phase after we like get God again and why we should follow him. And the here if you guys can open up whoever has a Bible, it's on Acts Acts one chapter I'll just read eleven. No, one eleven. Just eleven. Acts eleven. Which also said, You men of Galilee, why stood you gazing upon into heaven? This Jesus, which is taken up from, in, from you into heaven, shall so come in like a manner as you have seen him go into heaven. And here you can see that as soon as God was like, he was taken to heaven, the men, the disciples were like, Oh my God, Messiah just left me. Like, what am I going to do now? What am I going to do in the world without God, without Jesus? And then, as soon as that happens, an angel, two angels, if, I, if I'm correct, come down and they say, "Don't worry about it. Like, God, like He left you for a while. Like He's not, like He went to heaven, but He's always with you. He's always going to come back. There's always going to be a return." And then I wrote down here that even when we have problems, like we 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 think like God isn't near us at all. Like, like the disciples were like, we think like, "Oh, I'm alone. I'm going through problems. I can't do it anymore. I need the strength of God, but I can't because I can't see Him." You can remember that, like we read it here, the angels, two angels from heaven came to the disciples and they said that God doesn't do that. He always will have a return. He'll always have like another come coming. And that was my first reason. The second reason is um, he will never let you down at all. And if you guys, you guys don't have to turn the Bible, if you guys don't have to keep on turning it, it's in Psalm 51, 22. And here it says, I got a version. I'm not sure what Bible I got, but it was just, I like this version. It says, cast your burden upon the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never allow the righteous to be shaken. And this is huge. Like, I'm not, not going to read it again, but here it shows you that God is always for you 24-7, no matter what. If you're with him, he's always going to be with you. He's always going to have, like, you're his son. And... Like, whenever you pray or anything like that, he'll always have a reaction to it. And I wrote down a reaction because most people think that it's always going to be a response. It's always going to be like, oh, I'm going to sit down here, I'm going to pray for God, I'm going to ask something, and he's going to respond to me right there. It's not how, that's, that's like, no, that doesn't work. And here you don't have to turn in Matthew 7, 7, it says, Ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened to you. I'm not going to directly talk about the first. I'm going to talk about the first letters and sentence. It says, ask and seek, and then knock and receive. So most of us think that, like, oh, I'm going to just pray to God and just ask for anything I want, and then want to receive it. But it, like this is, like, legit. Anything that you ask God and seek for it, anything. It could be anything in this world that you ask, and you go after it. Everything, like, you have faith in it, it's going to happen no matter what. Because God's word said it. It says, it says that if you ask, it shall be given to you. Seek, and you shall find it. See, seek, and you'll find it. It says, like, no matter what it is, you'll always find it because God said it himself. And then, and then I wrote here that the best part in this is that whenever you ask God for something, most likely, like, I'm like, it's like a 99.99% chance, unless it's like God's will, he doesn't want it. But he, not only does it give you what you want, but what you ask for. He always gives you more. He always gives you, like, that, 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 like, it's, I don't know how to explain it, but it's, like, you ask for, like, a house, and he'll give you, like, a mansion. Like, it's weird, but God works like that. 